Hey Crawford County on the Movers, this is Shelby, the Cross Universe Health Dietitian, and I was asked to talk to you today about nutrition. The first thing that came to mind was all the questions I get about nutrition. So the top three questions or things people say just about nutrition. So the top three would be, what do I eat to lose weight? What diet to follow to lose weight? I hate water. And the third thing would be, I hate vegetables. It's rabbit food. So. I decided to talk about what to eat to lose weight and not just lose weight specifically I want to elaborate on that um, but it just got me thinking about people are just so confused about what to eat there's so much confusion so I want to talk about why food is so confusing and it's actually not first we'll start with dieters so anywhere you go at a family dinner and you have relatives over or um, just in passing at a restaurant, you always hear people talking about what diet they're on or I should eat this, I shouldn't eat this. So um, I want to focus on the on dieters. So this is kind of where food gets so confusing is because people are constantly dieting. So there's different types of dieters. The fad dieter, so they follow the hottest thing that's going around. So keto right now, uh, paleo, vegan, which vegan has its place, but there's lots of people who follow it just because of not beliefs, they just they do it because they think they'll lose a lot of weight. Cutting out entire food groups such as, oh, I can't eat a carb. Oh, there's a bread basket, I can't, I can't have bread. Um, or no fat, for example. Another example would be calorie counters. So um, they're a slave to the number and the one I hear a lot is, oh, I can, I can only have 1,200 calories, so 1,200 1, calories. Just to put in perspective, a toddler who's about two years old, uh, they need 1,000 calories a day. So that is unattainable. Our bodies need a lot more than that. So um, there's, there's the calorie counters, there's the pills, books, powders, shakes, you name it, they've tried it. Um, the potions, anything, they'll try it. They have the diet clubber, so that would be like Jenny Craig or Weight Watchers. Um, and not to say any of these are bad. These are just a lot of times you go on a diet and you get off it. Go on and get off. Um, the scale to a prisoner scale, so they weigh themselves numerous times a day. Um, their number just their, the number on the scale tells them, let's say they weigh right in the morning, it tells them what kind of day they're going to have. If they like the number, they're going to have a great day. And usually they'll be bad because the number was good that morning. And then when they weigh themselves at night, they're not happy with it. And then they, they get down on themselves. So um, the number affects their mood. Uh, the weekly dieter, so... Monday to Thursday or Monday to Friday morning, they're good. And then come Friday after work, they have their drink, they let their hair down, um, and they just go off the wagon. And I keep saying, doing air quotes because these are just, their, what do I want to say? They're terms, negative terms we constantly say. Um, and I guess the air quotes is because I don't believe in them, maybe. <laughs> so anyway, um, they fall off the wagon. And, oh, well, we'll just, well, I'll do better come Monday. So that's the weekly dieter. All or nothing dieter. So um, if I can't have that, then I'm just not going to eat. Or, oh, I had a piece of pizza. So um, screw the rest of the day. I don't, whatever. Bring on the Dunkin' Donuts. So it can go either extreme. Either they starve. If I can't have that, I'm just not going to eat. Or... I slipped up, so I'm gonna just snowball effect the rest of the day, and I'll pick it back up the next day. Uh, and then the willpower game. So just seeing how long you you can go without eating or without eating a certain food. So, okay, I have a big event coming up next month. I have a wedding coming up. I want to look really good. So no brownies, no chocolate. Can't for a whole month. That's all you can think about. So that, that game of willpower, how long can you go? And usually when you slip up, slip up and you have it, you overdo it because that's, it's all consuming. That's all you want because you're depriving yourself. So, and this is normal. I see this all the time. You're not, there's nothing wrong with you. This is, this is our normalcy, which sadly isn't, isn't the best. It's not the healthiest. So 
again, we'll talk about that today. Um, so why is, again, why is food so confusing? We have all these people talking about diets, but we also have the media working against us, um, like our society as a whole. So uh, think about billboards. How many billboards for food have you passed? Let's say you drive to work. How many billboards do you drive by that pertain to food? And what type of food is that? It's typically fast food. It's convenience really quick. Commercials, how many commercials? I mean, a lot of us are home right now or home more. How many commercials do you see in, in your show break in just that one minute break in between your show? Actually, it's a lot more than that. It seems like it's like three minutes. They're almost all food. And what types of food is it? It's not gonna, you don't see a commercial for an apple. It's not gonna be those wholesome, good for you foods. Here is a picture of all the cartoons that we probably recognize as kids. I like to pick on cereal. So these are all cereal cartoons um, that most of us can name who they are. And then think about cereal commercials. So what time of, what time of day are they on? They're usually not gonna be on at, at when you're watching Grey's Anatomy at night. They're gonna be on when kids are gonna be watching. So in the morning and after school times. Um, that's how mar marketing is amazing. That, that's how they're gonna s get the most sales. So like I said, media is a big influence on the foods that are in our house. Food companies bombard us with health claims on products. So you have the billboards, you have commercials, you have people talking, and then when you go into the store to buy your food, um, I like to think of it as like a, a car dealership. So a car dealership has that, that salesman. And oh, here's, here's all the specs or specifics on this vehicle. Oh, here's all the specifics on this vehicle. Here's the price, this is why you should buy it. Here's the reviews on it. Grocery stores don't have that, they don't have a hype man. So what they have is their, is their product, their, their packaging. So they're gonna slap on anything they can to make you pick it up. They're gonna pay out a lot of money to have a commercial so you remember it, so you go to the store and buy that. Um, colors, cartoons like we talked about. Their packaging, they'll do anything to make you grab it and buy it. So let's talk about health claims a little bit. So sugar-free, gluten-free, low-fat, vegan, helps lower your cholesterol, uh, made with real fruit. They're gonna put anything on there to make you buy it, even if it's false. Who regulates the food in, our, in America, it, uh, in the United States, is the FDA, Food and Drug Administration, and then who regulates meat is the USDA. But um, the FDA has kind of loose, loose regula regulations for what companies can or cannot put on their package. But a lot of times a company can put it on their package and the FDA will not intervene until there's an issue. So for example, Cheerios, they used to say um, lowers your cholesterol. And I think we can all remember that. There was commercials for it, you know, the honeybee going around. And um, if you eat it every morning for so many weeks, it can lower your cholesterol by so many points. The FDA did finally intervene and they, and they could not put that on their package anymore, but they can still say can help lower cholesterol. It's somewhat false advertising. It's, it's loosely regulated. It's, the point of it is a billboard, is to, is to sell the product. So again, I'm gonna pick on cereal. So look at this cereal aisle. Look at all the different colors, the different variety of how many selections there are. The cereal aisle is so long, top to bottom. A lot of companies pay for where their product is on, their, on the shelf. So um, it's called slotting fees. Well, there's different names, but um, a slotting fee is if they want to introduce a new product on the shelf. So let's say, um, like if, you, if you've ever been at Walmart and there's end caps, why is that item there? The company had to pay for that. And some of them even have like a little digital screen with a little commercial on it. The companies have to pay for that, that spot, so they can feature their item and get more sales. Um, they pay, they fork over money to pay to stay fees, which ensure a product stays on the store shelves. Um, and display fees, so that's premium placement. So like for example, Cheerios, you'll see right there that the yellow box is on three different shelves. Why isn't it just on one? 
they have to pay for that. And it, it's smart. You want the eye level and you want the kids stuff lower so they'll see it. It's very strategic. It's not your fault that food is so confusing. It's just, um, there's, we have a lot working against us. But that's what I'm here for, to clear, clear up the confusion. So now I want you to look at this produce aisle. Ah, it's so pretty. There's no advertising. It, there's hardly a nutrition label in sight. This is my recommendation. Don't take the silence of the yams as an indicator they have nothing to contribute to your health. Okay, just because they don't have a big yellow box and a mascot um, and at eye level, it doesn't mean it doesn't have anything to contribute to your health. And if you don't get that joke, go watch a movie called Silence of the Lambs. So what is my recommendation? It would be put your blinders on when you go to the grocery store. Put your blinders on. And when you want a product, let's say you're looking for yogurt, don't be a brand snob. It doesn't have to be name brand, it doesn't have to be off brand. Pick up what you're wanting. So let's say you want regular yogurt or you want Greek yogurt, okay? Pick up any product and look at the ingredient list. That's what you wanna look at. So for example, which one of these would you choose? And what's highlighted in red is all of the ingredients that really don't need to be in there. They're additives to make it taste better or they're, they're things that aren't, they really don't need to be in there. So. Um, I like to follow the 80-20 rule, and that's what I recommend to anyone who I'm lucky enough to get a meet with. 80% of the time, we're eating real food, foods that we know what the ingredients is. We can pronounce it, and 20% of the time would be um, that brownie that you're depriving yourself of for a month. Life is about balance. This yogurt, which one would you choose? Another example would be peanut butter. Which one of these would you choose? The natural has just peanuts and salt, as you can see in the ingredient list. I want to point out that the reduced fat, which a lot of people would think, oh, reduced fat, that's healthier. By the way, fat is, will not make you fat. Fat does not make you fat, okay? In the ingredient list, it says fully hydrogenated vegetable oils. If you go over to the nutrition facts and it goes under trans fats, it says zero grams. So, food companies, the label says trans fats. You would think that the ingredient list would say trans fat. It doesn't. It's hiding under fully hydrogenated vegetable oil. Also, it could say partially hydrogenated. The word you do not want in your body is hydrogenated. So, it says zero grams trans fat, but yet the ingredient list set contains it. This was a while ago now that trans fats were found to be very unhealthy for us, so that's why it has to be on the food label. So to hide it, to make foods appear healthier, companies don't call it trans fats, they call it fully hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated oils. And if it contains below 0.5 grams, they don't have to, they can round down and say zero. That's why I say just look at the ingredient list. Put your blinders on, just look at the ingredient list and you know what you want or do not want to put into your body. So I would not put in any hydrogenated oils. The other example I'd like to give is because cheese. So, this one surprised me. You would think cottage cheese is cottage cheese, just like milk is milk, or uh, butter is butter, right? Um, but this is an off-brand cottage cheese, like a store brand, and this is Daisy. Um, you, you do not have to go buy Daisy, okay? I'm not endorsed by them. I'm just giving you an example. So if you look at the ingredient list on Daisy, it's skim milk, cream, and salt. And they're both 4% fat, okay? The ingredient list on this one is this long. So it's pretty surprising. I mean, you'd have, who would have thought? So look at the ingredient list. And your first grocery trip might be longer, but we're creatures of habit. So we'll probably get the same cashews every time. You don't have to do this every time. But it is pretty eye-opening, all these chemicals um, and these weird ingredients and colors and science experiment things we're putting into our bodies. Um, so there's no magic pill. It's just eating real food most of the time. The last example I want to give is popcorn. So again, in red is all the ingredients that really should not be in there or ingredients that are very not healthy for our bodies. So the top one, Pop Secret, has hydrogenated oils, which I said is not not the best for our bodies. Healthy Pop, the bottom one, Jolly Time Healthy Pop. Oh, the word healthy is in there. That's the one I should grab. It has hydrogenated oils as well. So I, I just wanted to show you 
This is all you need to make popcorn. You need a brown paper bag, put some kernels in it, microwave it, fold it over. Fold it over kind of good because otherwise it'll pop out. Um, fold it over a couple times and uh, microwave it for about two minutes. It depends on your microwave. It's that easy. Melt some butter, drill it on top, shake the bag. It takes just as much time as these ones and it's, it's just popcorn kernels and butter or whatever you want to season it with. Another picture I want to show you. Which butter or margarine would you want to eat looking at this picture? So I know it's gross that butter has ants on it, but what that tells me is that ants want to eat this. They desire it. Barely any are touching the margarine and there's nothing at the reduced, fat reduced margarine. So if, if an insect won't eat it, why are we putting it into our bodies? What is in there? What plastic or who, who knows what, yoga mat, I don't know, or what are that, what else do they say? Um, car battery fluid. What is in there that the ants aren't eating it? Okay, take home message. Just those, those are just food for thought. Um, am I pro butter? Yes. <laughs> you can kind of see my stance on that. But take home message is diets suck. They create obsessive behaviors like counting, controlling, denying, and promoting negative thoughts. They lower our self-esteem. They don't encourage us to get in touch with how we feel about food. They create frust frustration and self-destruction. So diets don't work. You get on it, you get off it. You lose weight, you gain it back. Maybe, maybe it more so. It's just this disordered eating, repetitive, and what we need to focus on is just nourishing our bodies. So take home, eat real food most of the time. I say 80-20. You can eat a brownie. I repeat, a dietitian is telling you, you can eat a brownie. You can. Most of the time, get that real food in, and yes, there's always room for treats. Um, I say you know, eat your greens for, for your body and nourishing and have that brownie for your sanity. The more fruits and veggies, the better. Eat food that will go bad and mold. That's just, uh, I've had Oreos in my cupboard. Yes, I eat Oreos. And they last for quite a while. Um, if I make homemade cookies, they go stale, they go bad. Um, that's a good indicator, just like the ants. What is in that Oreo that can preserve it for that long? They are tasty, but eat food that is naturally blue, for example, and it won't dye your cereal blue, your cereal milk blue. Um, just like a little funny thing to remember. So like you've all heard, you can eat, eat anything in moderation. There's no magic pill, potion, diet. It's just listening to your body, eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full, Eat mainly real foods and you can still have your treats. Okay, so here's my stance on sugar, sugar sweeteners um, or sugar substitutes. I'm not a fan and here's why. If I was to pick one, it'd be stevia, but okay, here's why. So I always ask people, what color are you? You know, are you yellow, blue, pink, white? Truvia is like white and green and then stevia is green. So you have Splenda, Equate, you know, all those different color packets. In theory, it sounds like a good idea. Like, oh, it's no calories, I'm a diabetic, so it's not gonna spike my blood sugar. Um, but what it does to your body is, the first place you start breaking down sugar, and sugar is the quickest broken down uh, nutrient in our bodies. So the three main nutrients that food is made up of is fat, protein, and, and carb, which carb breaks down to sugar. And the first of those three nutrients to get broken down is carbs. It starts getting broken down in your saliva. That's how quickly um, in this enzyme called amylase. It doesn't matter. Okay, so you, you eat something sweet. Your tongue tastes it, it secretes that enzyme. It talks to your stomach. Your stomach is, or your GI system is like a second brain. It says, hey, we got something sweet coming in. Get ready, okay? Get ready to break it down. Um, and absorb those nutrients and do whatever you need to do with it. So mouth is talking to the stomach. You ingest it and your body start like, okay, we're getting ready, get the gears going, and then er, put on the brakes. There's nothing here. This was a, a trick. Uh, what's going on? So it confuses the body and it's still going through the mechanisms and then it's just kind of, it, it's confusing the body. Um, so there's not lots of studies on this, just kind of theories that that is damaging us. 
that um, there's lots of studies on Diet Coke that drinking that, which is the same, um, there's artificial sweeteners in it, uh, but there's lots more other ingredients, fake science experiment stuff in there besides just artificial sweetener in your coffee. But anyway, um, that the diet in the long run, you do not lose weight and you actually gain compared to a regular real sugar. Let's say you put, you put artificial sweetener in your coffee. You know, like what if you switch to real sugar? You're not going to put too much. You're going to do just as much as it tastes good. You're not going to do this much sugar to this, to this much coffee or creamer. A lot, I get a lot of questions about creamer. We're just going to trust, okay, that little bit, it really typically is like not even a spoonful of sugar. If you do a packet, that's nothing. In the grand scheme of your day, have the real thing. Okay, so ingredient list for that, since you can't go into the store and look at that ingredient list, it's on the app. There's two tabs. There's usually an ingredient list, and then there might be a tab for nutrition, like a full list or about a description about the item, but it is on there. And like I said, we're creatures of habit. Um, we're going to get the same bread. We're going to get the same yogurt almost every time.